The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Welcome to Real Life with Jack Hibbs. Listen, Christian, this is what God wants you to do. When you come to the Lord in prayer, you're seeking his face for something, guidance, direction. Is it for school? Is it for that guy or for that girl? Is it for what? Go after the Lord and listen, you will wrestle with him in prayer, but don't let him go. Want to know the purpose of your life? Jack Hibbs encourages you to seek the Lord, wrestle with him until you fully understand his promises for you. Stay tuned for the message, Get Ready to Rumble. America is facing unprecedented challenges and turmoil with threats from secular agendas, widespread moral corruption, and rampant violence everywhere. Understanding Bible prophecy is more crucial than ever. In What You Need to Know About the Rapture, theologian Charles Ryrie explains the biblical prophecy of the rapture in simple terms, clearing up myths and giving clear scriptural insights about the next event on the prophetic calendar. Dr. Ryrie makes it easy to understand how these prophecies relate to current events and America's role in them. Get your questions answered about this highly anticipated event with Charles Ryrie's insightful explanations. What you need to know about the rapture will be sent to you with our thanks when you make a gift of any amount to real life. Visit jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346 to get your copy. Order now. Do you ever wrestle with God? Do you struggle with God? Listen, if you don't, I have serious doubts if you're a believer or not, to be honest with you. Every, every child of God struggles with him in the sense of hearing from him or getting direction from him, or maybe he gives us information or he gives us marching orders or whatever it might be. There is always this dynamic in the Christian life of you and I struggling with God. You know, A.W. Tozer called that a time where we have our crises with God. Everybody's gotta have their crises with God. And that's when God wins the argument. Or in this case, God wins the wrestling match. We learned that from Jacob. Jacob wrestled with God and Jacob lost. And by losing to God, it was the greatest victory Jacob ever experienced. Our situations can overwhelm us, but we need to cry out to God. We wrestle with him because our wills are being bent molded, shaped into his will, into his image. So prayer is what we do when we call out to him. We are crying out to him like your child cries out to you in their moment of struggle and difficulty. So again, let me ask you, do you struggle with God? Are you wrestling with God? Well, this message is designed in such a way to get you to think about grabbing hold of not only God, but the promises of God. And I hope you don't forget. In fact, I, I, wanna, I wanna encourage you to get into this message to get ready to rumble. We all think about the great matches and the wrestling or the fighting scenes, but allow me to do it this way. The mic drops down and I say to you, get ready to rumble because God wants to, what? Wrestle with you so that actually you might win. By giving up, that's when we win. God bless you guys. Let's get into this study. According to the plan of God, Romans 8:28, mark it down, put your names next to it. This is that famous verse, God has a purpose. The question begs, purpose for whom? The answer is to those who love God. And I know, I've told you before, I share with you the same deficit. 
I love God, and the moment I say that, I'm sick to my stomach as to how little I love God. Because he's so amazing, I should love him even more. But I struggle with the fact I don't. I want to. He's worthy. But I find within myself a profound weakness to get as close to God as I want to. Because I'm dragging this carcass of my body in this life that gets in the way of my relationship with God. But that's why there's the great promise that someday you and I will be set free from our bodies. That's going to be a great day. And so when that word tells us that we know, it is a knowledge of the issues. It means that God knows about the issues of the past in your life. There's no but. There's no yeah, but. No, none of that. He knows about the issues of your life. Watch this. He knows about the issues of your life now. And he knows about the issues of your life in the future, though you and I do not know them yet. He already knows. You can trust him. He knows. And by the way, mark this down, by the way, this knowledge that God knows all about us and thus we know about God, we can take a great rest in knowing this, that this knowledge is not a cerebral knowledge. It's not analytical. It's not limited by that. It's not theoretical. It's not a dream. Oh, you Christians in your... No, no. It's not theoretical knowledge. It's not philosophical knowledge either. It's not one of those possibilities. It's not a knowledge that is just to be studied. You can get this doctorate degree in this knowledge. We're not interested in that. In all truth, we are interested in the knowledge of God to where it's experiential. This book, the Bible, lays the foundation for you and I now to live with our feet, as it were, on this word and live an experiential faith as a Christian that makes a difference in this world around us. We don't talk about Christianity. We are to do it. And there's a big difference in all of that. Thus, he says in verse 28, all things work together for good. Everything that is arriving in our lives is ordained by God we are about to find out. Very important. The Bible tells us it is to those who love God. We're talking about this now. Those who are called according to his purpose. I love this. God's got a purpose for your life. So we live in a bizarre time right now. We have a, we have a world that is rejecting God wholesale. And it's, it's bringing itself to an interesting conundrum, to an interesting point of difficulty, which is this. The evolutionary theory has almost all but dried up. Nobody runs around today pronouncing that they're an evolutionist, because then if they do, you got to ask them, why do you think that? Tell me why you believe that. And then they've got to struggle to try to prove why they believe it. The more they talk about it, the more foolish they look. No, seriously, scientists are embracing now at the very least, intelligent design, but they're saying, now that's not even enough. There's evidence of a personal designer. You know that right now. All of us know that. There's evidence of a personal designer. But if you press it, you've got to come to the conclusion that there's things in this world and in this existence of yours and mine that is not only personal, but it is deeply, deeply internal. That there's a whole new world, as it were, inside of us that is spirit and that is soul. And it's been the long desire of man to find himself. Who am I? And so man goes on his pursuits. Well, I want you to know and be reminded that according to the Bible, God created you with his purpose in mind. Every one of us who are believers in Christ Jesus are to know the purpose as to why we are living. If you say, well, I don't know yet. Well, then you know what? Then do the Jacob thing. Remember Jacob? Jacob in the Old Testament? Jacob, the Bible tells us, was, I'll just say it this way. He was minding his own business. It was at night. He might have even been sleeping, if I remember right. And the Bible tells us the angel of the Lord came to him. Now, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament is a statement of a theophanies. If you don't know what a theophanies is, a theophanies is a Christophanies, which is a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ. When Christ appears prior to being born in Bethlehem, it's throughout the Old Testament. And the Bible says he shows up, and this is kind of cute. 
the angel of the Lord, the Lord, fixed a fight with Jacob. I don't know how he did it. Did he kick him in the nose? Did he poke his ear? Did he take a feather and rub it underneath Jacob's nose? We don't know. But the Bible says that, they got, that Jacob got up and they started wrestling. You say, oh, that's ridiculous. Oh, yeah? Have you ever wrestled with God? Are you wrestling with God now? And they're wrestling. And the Lord could have killed them. The Lord could have done anything he wanted, but the Lord had a plan. The Lord had a purpose. And the Bible says that they wrestled all night. Man, what is this Jacob made of? And the Bible says, seeing that the angel of the Lord could not prevail against Jacob, that the angel of the Lord struck his hip and his hip went out of joint. And he limped all the days of his life from that moment on. But he still wouldn't let go. And then the angel of the Lord says, I got to leave. The day is coming. I've got to go. And Jacob said, and this is what I want you to have. Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you favor my life. Okay, read. The, listen, are you hearing me, everybody? This is the angel of God, the Lord himself, allowing himself. First of all, the Lord picks the fight. The Lord comes in, picks the fight. Jacob's fighting with the Lord, and here's what happens. The Lord allows himself to be in this entanglement with Jacob because God's got a plan with Jacob, or for Jacob, and then for Jacob to say, I'm not letting you go. So wait a minute, who started this fight? Well, the Lord did. But who's in control here? Well, the Lord is in control, but he allows Jacob to take the upper hand. Listen, Christian, this is what God wants you to do. When you come to the Lord in prayer, you're seeking his face for something, guidance, direction. Is it for school? Is it for that guy or for that girl? Is it for what? Go after the Lord and listen, you will wrestle with him in prayer, but don't let him go. He allows himself to be caught. He allows himself to be in this dialogue. And he allows himself to have you and I say to him, Lord, I will not let you go. I think God loves that when we say, I'm hanging on to you, Jesus, and I'm not going to let go. I think God loves that. And God bless Jacob. And you need to remember that. God's got a purpose in your life. And if you don't know what it is, then it's time to go wrestle with God and get an answer. Don't let go of them. Are, don't answer out loud. Are you a born-again follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you say yes, then I, that it's, it's incumbent for me to ask, what is the purpose of your life? And if you cannot answer, it's time for you to go wrestle. And God will give you the answer. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15, but when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, this is Paul speaking, and called me through his grace. Why? How come? To reveal his son in me. That's a tremendous statement. Look at that verse. Look at all the pre-existing mechanisms that have to be there. But when it pleased God, that is in some point in history past, who separated me from my mother's womb. Paul's now an old man saying this. God had a plan back then. And not only that, It was God's call that he placed upon me through his grace to do what, Paul? To reveal his son in me. God wants the world to know that through my life, Jesus is Lord and Savior. That's true for every single one of us. If you're a computer engineer or a contractor, a stay-at-home dad or mom or a rocket scientist, it doesn't matter. Do you understand? God's got a purpose for your life. And we need to get hungry and passionate to pursue him as to what that is. Last service, we had two awesome, beautiful men of God in their 80s. U.S. Marines fought in Vietnam, and they came to service. I got to meet them, and it just led me to think about how God has a a deployment for the believer. God's got a mission for the believer. You You learn, you read, you pray, you talk out to God. He talks back into you, and you say, Lord, here I am, send me. And God will commission you. He'll deploy you. And uh, by the state of our nation, God needs a lot of you to be deployed into this country. This whole nation has become a mission field now. But I have to tell you, there's a verse that somebody gave me. I was a brand new Christian, and they gave me this verse because they had heard my story that I had been a survivor of an abortion 
1957, and they heard me say that, and they came and they said, listen, you need to look at this verse. And I remember marking it into my Bible and keeping it forever to this moment. And uh, it has served me well for these years, and it's Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 and 5. Now, I'm going to ask you right now to wrestle with God, as it were, and grab this verse and tear it off the video screen and make it your own, right? Do this. Then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah is saying, behold, this is God speaking, behold, or before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That verse is for every single human being, not just Jeremiah. Are you hearing me? You say, I don't know how God would. Don't talk to him like that. Don't, don't define how he's going to do it. Just say, Lord, this verse is in the Bible. If you want to live that verse out in my life, here we go. Can you do that? Can you just be there? And say, Lord, I'm asking you to do whatever that means in my life. And God will go to work in your life. A purpose. Called according to his purpose. God's got purposes. He's got an absolute plan that is charted. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible tells us that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Listen, the good works come out of a life that is now under the control of Christ, okay? Very, very important. These things that are for the purposes of God bring God honor, advance the gospel, and bring reality and meaning to your life. And then that word good. All of these things to be worked out for the good. The word in Greek for good is generous, The ending, listen everybody, the ending is to be generous. If you're a Christian, you and I are going through troubles. We're going to go through more troubles. Don't worry, don't be be afraid of that. In fact, as a Christian, the more you learn about how God brings you and I through troubles, the more you look for God-ordained trouble. It's a good thing. Difficulties draw us close to God, and it's in that moment we see the power of God. I've noticed that people who criticize Christianity and claim to be Christians and they think it's boring are people who've never gotten off the couch. They've they've never made themselves available to him. But he's got a generous plan and it's good. It's generous, kindly. The word means only that which is a good thing. Even in your marriage that might be breaking up or that note from that physician or maybe that grade. You thought you were going to get into Stanford. Thank God you didn't. You wound up not getting in by the grace of God to protect your life. (laughs) Only thing worse than that would have been Harvard. (laughs) But the exact same reality of God's purposes, you and I love to read about them and, and know about them. So what do you mean? How about this? God's purposes. You think God had a purpose for Noah? You would never doubt that. But did you know that Noah is no different than you and I? See, do you believe that? The Bible says that all of us, that there's, there's no one greater than the other, that we are all just like Elijah. We have the same passions that the great prophet Elijah had. The Bible says that God doesn't esteem one man higher than the other. That means we all come to the foot of the cross level. I love that, by the way. That's the message that needs to be shouted across this nation right now to to shut up this talk about racism and division. No, come to the foot of the cross. There's no color at the foot of the cross. If there is, it's red. It's the blood of Christ because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all come. There's nobody better than the other, lesser than the other. And so think about Noah. Noah. I wrote down Job. Job. By the way, you know, all of us that sometimes will have Job moments in our life. That's why God put the book of Job in the Bible. Joseph. What about David? And what about Peter? I thought about Luther, the great reformer, Luther. George Whitfield, one of my heroes. Love George Whitfield. Read everything I can about George Whitfield. Charles Spurgeon. 
A big fan of mine, my, my, an, an, a, a guy that I just think the world of, I, I, I'd love for you to read about him too to find out who he really is, is Samuel Adams. Not, not the beer guy. <laughs> that, by the way, that was his dad. Samuel Adams was a malt brewer. Samuel Adams Jr. was an incredible lover of God, profound insights into the word of God. He just happened to be not only one of our founding fathers, but the Bible, uh, or I should say our nation's history tells us that without Samuel Adams, there never would have been a revolution at all because he understood that liberty came from God and could not be taken away from man. What about Billy Graham? Did the God have a purpose for Billy Graham? By the way, did you know that Billy Graham found his purpose not far from here? In the San Bernardino Mountains, Billy Graham took a midnight walk, not knowing what he should do, if he should quit ministry as a young man or not, and God spoke to him just miles in the Southern California mountains, and God told him that you're going to be an evangelist, and you have the gift of evangelism, and go do it. And he said, from that moment on, his life was never the same. Wow. I think of Chuck Smith, who wanted to be a medical doctor. And God said, you can be a medical doctor or I can call you to be a doctor of the souls of men. And Chuck Smith said, I'll go with the souls of men. What about Dr. Ed Heinsohn? What about Charles Stanley? And uh, those are the guys that have passed on. I didn't want Chuck Swindoll or David Jeremiah to think I thought they were dead. But I threw them in the group, all the dead guys. Um, <laughs> Chuck Swindoll, David Jeremiah... What about us? What about you? God wants to use us. Write this down if you would. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 21. This is a cool statement. Don't boast in men, meaning men cannot give you anything that is going to translate into what God can give you. All things are yours in Christ. That's, this, that's what that means. And it's going to say it here in a moment. Whether uh, Paul or Apollos or Cephas, in other words, uh, we're, you know, we're apostles, but don't listen to us or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come. All are yours, and you are Christ, and Christ is God's. What a beautiful statement that is. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 14. The Bible tells us, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes the purpose of God in your life. So I mentioned uh, Jacob. Jacob was an amazing guy because I got to tell you, Jacob is the guy in the Bible that we would really want to study more because he was such a stinker. Jacob was a tough guy, man. Let me tell you, somehow Jacob always landed on his feet at others' expense. <laughs> He's the last guy you'd want to do business with. He'd wind up owning the company somehow. Jacob. And Jacob took that resourcefulness of himself, and he thought he could uh, handle God. How many times do we do that? We take our own strength and we basically, yeah, I'll say it for you, I'll say it for us. Hey God, listen, I got a good idea. Let me tell you how it's gonna happen. And God laughs at us. But you know what? He's so patient, he's so kind, he's so loving and forgiving that he lets us wrestle with him until we're tired. And then when we give up, that's when God can go to work. And that's why, listen, a very important thing to remember, that when we pray, we are wrestling. We're wrestling against ourselves. We're wrestling against this world around us. And in some way, we're wrestling with God. The beautiful thing is, when we lose to ourselves, that's not good. When we lose to this world, that's not good. But when we lose to God, that's where the victory is. That's when the victory is had. In fact, didn't Jesus himself say in the Garden of Gethsemane, which means the Garden, Gethsemane means the Garden of Crushing, that when Jesus cried out and said, Father, if there's any other way that this cup can be removed from me, he's really saying if salvation can happen for mankind any other way than the cross, let's, let's do that instead. And then Jesus said, but not my will, thy will be done. And in that moment of wrestling, Christ himself yielded to the Father, victory was had. Listen, to bring you more Bible study, to give you more insights into the Word of God, jackhibbs.com is where I'd love for you to go and share it with your friends, Facebook, Instagram, all the various platforms. We're studying the Word of God because it matters. 
God bless you until next time. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. America is facing unprecedented challenges and turmoil with threats from secular agendas, widespread moral corruption, and rampant violence everywhere, understanding Bible prophecy is more crucial than ever. In What You Need to Know About the Rapture, theologian Charles Ryrie explains the biblical prophecy of the rapture in simple terms, clearing up myths and giving clear scriptural insights about the next event on the prophetic calendar. Dr. Ryrie makes it easy to understand how these prophecies relate to current events and America's role in them. Get your questions answered about this highly anticipated event with Charles Ryrie's insightful explanations. What you need to know about the rapture will be sent to you with our thanks when you make a gift of any amount to real life. Visit jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346 to get your copy. Order now. Life is full of fear, doubt, and worry. The more you listen to and see the world today, the easier it is to feel hopeless and helpless. Amidst the confusion, a voice of hope has emerged. The Real Life Network. Founded by Jack Hibbs, the Real Life Network is a free digital media platform, void of the noise of secular media that attack people of faith. Click on the QR code or sign up for free at reallifenetwork.com. Fast forward your faith. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there, you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.